is June Kim. I'm the acting United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Yesterday morning, as thousands came into New York City through Port Authority, Port Authority bus terminal, one man came with a hate-filled heart and an evil purpose. In the middle of rush hour, as everyday New Yorkers hurried to their jobs, to their schools, ready to start the work week and get going with their busy lives, one man came to kill, to maim, and to destroy. To that man, the corridors under the Port Authority, the gateway into the city for hundreds of thousands of commuters every day, was a place to murder as many innocent human beings as he could and to blow himself up in the process. All in support of a vicious terrorist cause. As, it, as alleged in the complaint we filed today, that man was Akaed Ula. Yesterday, Ula stood in the tunnels under the Port Authority plotting to kill. Today, he stands charged with federal crimes and terrorism. The complaint filed this morning charges Ula with five counts of federal crimes. First, providing material support to a terrorist organization, that being ISIS. Second, using and attempting to use a weapon of mass destruction, that being an improvised explosive device, or an IED. Third, bombing a place of public use. Fourth, destruction of property by means of an explosive. And fifth, use of a destructive device during and in furtherance of a crime of violence. As the complaint alleges, Uber went to the Port Authority yesterday morning with a purpose. He had strapped to his body an IED, a pipe bomb that he had made of a, using a metal pipe filled with metal screws held together under his jacket with wires and zip ties. As alleged, the location and timing of his planned attack was no accident, and his motivation was no mystery. As he admitted in statements he made after being advised of and waiving his Miranda rights, Ula admitted that he began researching how to build bombs about a year ago and had been planning this particular attack for several weeks. He allegedly started to gather materials for his bomb two to, three week, uh, two to three weeks ago and actually built the bomb a week before his attack. He allegedly selected the location and timing to maximize human casualties. As alleged, he also admitted that he had been inspired by ISIS to carry out his attack saying that he had been radicalized online through ISIS propaganda starting as far back as 2014. Although the investigation remains very much active and ongoing, court-authorized searches have already <coughs> uncovered further evidence of Ula's allegedly destructive crimes and his terrorist intent. A search yesterday of his apartment in Brooklyn revealed metal pipes, pieces of wires, and metal screws consistent with the bomb materials recovered at the scene. Officers also found a passport there in Ula's name, in handwriting that included one particularly chilling note. And I quote, O oh America, die in your rage, close quote. Although in plotting his attack, Ula had apparently hoped to die in his own misguided rage, taking as many innocent people as he could with him. But through incredibly good fortune, his bomb did not seriously injure anyone other than himself. And New York's brave first, reform, first responders with the Port Authority Police Department, men who ran into the smoke-filled corridor as panicked commuters ran, ran out, they quickly found and neutralized, neutralized Lula, who was laying on the ground, injured but not killed by his bomb. I want to thank and commend those brave officers who responded to the scene. 
I also want to thank the FBI represented here today uh, by Assistant <coughs> Director and Judge Bill Sweeney. Um, it is unfortunately uh, too common that we find ourselves standing up here uh, together to announce federal charges against an alleged terrorist. But the FBI's work and the work of all the other agencies and agents that form New York's Joint Terrorism Task Force uh, is nothing short of amazing. The city and the country uh, is lucky to have them protecting us, disrupting plots, and when attacks like this happen, investigating the suspects and bringing them to justice. Of course, I also want to thank uh, the New York City Police Department, represented here today uh, by First Deputy Commissioner Benjamin Tucker, uh, and Deputy Commissioner for Intelligence and Counterterrorism, John Miller. Every time we have an incident like this, or any other public safety issue, big or small, the NYPD is there, keeping us safe, and letting us go about our business and our lives, and keeping our citizens reassured. I've said this many times before, and no one has ever been able to contradict me uh, when I've said that the NYPD is the greatest police force in the world. And we are truly lucky to have them watching over our city, and that was never more true than it was yesterday. I want to thank the Port Authority Police Department, represented here today uh, by Chief uh, Michael Brown, uh, uh, commanding officer Roy Shindell. As I mentioned, it was great Port Authority police officers who ran into the smoke-filled danger without regard for their safety and first uh, confronted the defendant. We all owe them that debt credit. Finally, I want to thank the terrorism uh, prosecutors and investigators in our office who jumped on this right away, uh, worked hand-in-hand -hand with the agents and officers, uh, the ATTF, uh, and put together federal charges on Lula within a day after his attack. They are Assistant U.S. Attorney Sean Crowley, uh, Rebecca Domaleski, George Turner, uh, as well as Special Agents Kevin Song and George Corey. And I also want to thank the supervisors of, of that unit, Sean Buckley and Elon Brown. Because of who we are, how we live our lives, and what we stand for. New York City consistently remains a prime target for terrorists. Those who target us who are threatened by the strength of our spirit, the height of our ambition, and the breadth of our freedom. We are targeted by those whose poisoned minds think a kill us, killing innocent Americans here in this city will somehow advance their twisted ideology. Of course, they are wrong, and they will inevitably fail. In New York City, alleged terrorists like Lula who come seeking to sow hate, fear, and terror will instead find strength, resilience, and hope. And like the many other alleged terrorists, who have come before him, Lula will find here in a Manhattan courtroom just down the street another great American virtue, and that is justice. And that justice will be tough, it will be fair, and it will be swift. Now let me bring to the podium uh, Assistant Director in Charge of Thanks, Junior. Thanks to your team. Your work yesterday was exceptional. Three years ago, Mr. Ola headed down a path of radicalization, viewing pro-ISIS materials online, including videos inspiring followers to carry out attacks in their own homelands if traveling abroad proved too hard of a task. One year ago, he began researching how to build improvised explosive devices online, pipe bombs constructed of basic components found in your average hardware store. And yesterday, as New York City commuters, designed themselves to their Monday morning commute, they became the unwitting victims of one of the final chapters of his story. At approximately 7.20 a.m., he let loose his plan to conduct a mass casualty attack, setting off a pipe bomb strapped to his body inside a New York City subway terminal, as we allege today. Like many others before him, we allege he was inspired by a group that exploits technology in an effort to spread a violent ideology effectively convincing sympathizers to work with them, commit terrorist acts around the globe, and there are others absorbing similar propaganda. 
Throughout the day yesterday, we conducted evidence recovery, exploited intelligence, executed search warrants, and conducted other investigative operations. Our investigation is ongoing. We do not stop because we have an individual who is charged. Our initial and ongoing priority is to always identify other potential operatives and address other potential threats. There are instances following these types of attacks where the intelligence we develop at the time may dictate that we locate, detain, and in interview individuals in order to ensure the safety of the public and the safety of the law enforcement personnel conducting those operations. Our teams use appropriate, reasonable, and lawful methods to accomplish these goals, but to be clear, our teams will move with speed and move with purpose. I've said this before, and it's important, so I will say it again. I cannot stress enough the importance of an engaged public, especially as we head into the holiday season. This does not mean just being engaged on your daily commute. The nature of this particular strain of the terrorism threat can often mean evaluating behavior that doesn't mean anything until you combine it with other intelligence. We rely heavily upon the community's assistance to accomplish this task. We often equate it to trying to differentiate a needle between a stack of needles. I expect people to go about their business, but I'm asking that you do so in maintaining awareness of your surroundings. We understand it's easy to become complacent, especially when living, working, and committing in this city is part of your everyday life. I'm simply asking those of you who do not already do so to look up from your phone, maybe take one of your earbuds out, and pay attention to what's happening around you perhaps even engage with your fellow citizen. If you see something or hear something that concerns you, tell us and let the JTTF and all of our partners do their work. The tip line for that type of reporting is 1-800-577-TIPS if you reside in the city. We have dedicated operational squads to monitor any incoming threat that could affect the city and the surrounding area. We have a threat response squad that operates 24-7 to respond to incoming tips and meetings. And the JTTF is comprised of more than 50 agencies working side by side in order to keep the city safe. We will continue to address and assess each threat fully. I'd like to thank the many dozens of agencies uh, that worked yesterday and, and in all days leading up to these types of events, and particularly the NYPD, the New York State Police, the Port Authority PD, the Fire Department, all of our partners, but most especially yesterday, uh, Chief Brown, the Air Force officers, and I know there were others, but we highlight the four exceptional public servants. Uh, if you get to see the full video, these men put themselves in great danger uh, and are heroes every day. So if you live and, live and work in the city and you happen to go through that terminal and you see an officer, regardless of the agency, please give them a shout out. What your men did yesterday was exceptional. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Next, uh, uh, we up to the podium. First, Deputy Commissioner Benjamin Tucker. Thank you, Jim. Let me also just add uh, my congratulations to Chief Brown uh, and his officers for their amazing work yesterday. Um, we spend a lot of time in NYPD following up with our officers after they take extraordinary action and put themselves in harm's way on a regular basis. And so uh, to observe the Port Authority officers do exactly the same thing, it just reinforces the notion of the partnerships that are so critically important to the work that we all do in law enforcement um, in, here in the city to keep it safe. So again, Chief Brown, please tell your officers how much we appreciate them stepping up to the plate to take the action that they did to keep New Yorkers safe. Today's announcement of the federal criminal charges against uh, Mr. Ula <coughs> is only the beginning of the process of bringing him to justice for his acts uh, yesterday. Fortunately, no innocent victim suffered any serious physical injuries when he detonated his homemade bomb um, in the crowded subway car during rush hour here in New York City yesterday. But let me be clear, his intention uh, was, was to cause mass destruction and to do so in a vicious manner as we have seen in other attacks too often throughout the nation, here in the city, and around the world. Our law enforcement partners, as was noted uh, by, uh, by Director uh, uh, Sweeney, our law enforcement partners, local, federal, international, 
are dedicated to hunting down those who commit these acts of terror, along with anyone who assists them, enables them uh, in their criminal acts of vicious conduct against citizens of the city and the country. First, Deputy Commissioner, uh, we'll take a few questions. Yes. Um, there's no allegation one way or the other in the complaint, and so I'm not going to comment on that. I don't know if um, this is what person who wants to say anything. That. No, no, I don't really too much. We constantly look at all the information we have, and we'll continue to dig so far, and we'll see in case we have even drawn our attention before this year. Yes? Uh, the complaint alleges that Mr. Ulo were on Facebook shortly before these attacks, Trump failed to protect her nation. Was there something specific? that the suspect perceived that the president had done, that, that aggrieved him. I know uh, the complaint talked a, a little bit about he was upset in general um, with, with American actions and, and was sympathetic to, to ISIS. Was there something specific that precipitated the attack? Um, unfortunately, as many of you know, at this stage, in this case, where we have a complaint, um, that's the only thing that's public. I'm not going to go beyond what's in the complaint. The complaint does allege that he admitted, uh, following his arrest in a, a Mirandai statement, that he had posted that uh, comment on Facebook. He also admitted, as alleged in the complaint, that he did this uh, in support of ISIS. So beyond the, the admissions, alleged admissions in the complaint, I'm not going to go into any further detail. June. I'm just wondering, because you have it in the complaint, if you're able to perhaps characterize what it was about the about the Middle East or what the U.S. was doing in the Middle East based on his statements um, that that caused him to, to maybe commit this attack. Again, beyond what's in the complaint, and you're correct in, in noting that his admissions included both a statement that he did this in support of ISIS, that he had been radicalized through review of internet propaganda from ISIS, uh, and a clear statement that it was in support of ISIS. He also made statements about, um, I don't know the exact words, I should look at the complaint, but uh, issues he had with American Middle East policy. Beyond that, I'm not going to go, uh, can't go any further than that. Okay. In addition to the Miranda statements, were there questions about the public safety exception before he was written for ISIS? Did he make any statements? All we've alleged in the complaint and all we're prepared to disclose at this time are uh, the Mirandai statements that are set forth in the complaint. Yes. There are reports that he traveled from Brooklyn to Port Authority, took several subways up there. Is there a particular reason why he detonated at that location specifically, rather than a subway train, perhaps? There, there is a allegation in the complaint, again, relating to his admission that he was Looking, he carried out the attack on a work day because he believed that there would be the most, there would be more people there. Um, so it does, the allegations do include a statement that he was looking to maximize uh, the damage for humans to the extent that answers your question. Yes. Yeah. Um, there were uh, apparently, according to the complaint, handwritten notations in the passport one of which was Old America Dying Your Rage. Are you going to be able to elaborate on what some of the other indications were that were in the passport? No, I'm not. That's fine. Sir, uh, could you fill us in about the timing? You said he's been planning for as long as three years, and uh, there's some reporting out there that he's uh, that it's Christmas time, that that is why he chose this time of year to carry out this kind of attack. And there's lost if you could touch upon his travels in the past year back to his home country as well as the Middle East. So in terms of the timing, what's in the complaint is that he had been uh, planning this particular attack uh, for two to three weeks and that he built the bomb a week ago. It does allege that going as far back as, as 2014, he began uh, getting radicalized uh, through online ISIS-related propaganda. Uh, beyond that, and, uh, I'm not going to be able to get into any other timing or uh, his travel. Thank you. Did you? When will he be in court? Mr. Kim. Oh, yeah. There's a question about uh, when he'll be in court. 
Uh, he remains uh, in the hospital, and so his presentment we expect will be what we call a bedside presentment. Uh, it will happen either, either later today or tomorrow, and that's something we would have to coordinate with the court. Uh, but I, I expect it will be a bedside presentment. It can happen in a number of different ways. It can be with the, with the judge sitting here through video conference. I believe that's the more common way, but that I think is something that uh, we can provide more information when we know more. Thank you. Sure that. Can you have access to resentment? It's a public